BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 168, Causes of Cognitive Decline. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to another episode of BioBalance HealthCast. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about something that, that I find real interesting because it, it is something that I notice in myself a lot, uh, and that is uh, cognitive decline, particularly in terms of memory. That I used to be able to just know things that I knew. If somebody asked me a question, especially a factual question, you know, like who was the 16th president of the United States, pow, it would just pop. I didn't have to look for it or anything. That's now, amazing. Now, things that I used to know like that don't pop. I have to track them down. So <laughs> now I've had to figure out my filing system. Where would I have put that information? What's it connected to? Is it in this file drawer or that drawer? And, and mentally have to trace where mm -hmm. is it? So when I watch Jeopardy on TV and stuff and they ask these questions that I know that I know the answers to, uh -huh. I'm reduced to like, ah, ah, ah. It That's won't what come. I've always When it used to just come. <laughs> That's so, so now, part of that is three, four minutes later, I'd have the answer if, if I pause it. You know? And what you're describing is, is a loss of long-term and short-term memory and retrieval mm -hmm. of words and labels. Yeah. And for Jeopardy, you need retrieval of words right. and labels. And right. what, what, how that hit me was no ovaries, no recall. I mean, my ovaries came out and I immediately got stupid. So your memory was in your ovaries? It must have been. It was a little low. No, but actually, it, it, it was it because was of the hormonal. The hormones. Exactly. The, the connections are, are really very obvious. And, mm -hmm. and so the reason we, we're going to discuss this, one of, one of the things that Kathy's practice is noted for is her commitment and her entire staff's commitment to staying current on the new knowledge and the cutting edge of things that impact mm -hmm. hormone imbalances and, and regulation. When they discover a new way to do it or a better way to do it, she wants to know. And so she and her whole staff go to these conferences on these topics and they have access to presentations. And so mm -hmm. there was a presentation at this conference on assumptions about aging relative to cognitive decline, mm -hmm. the, the decline of your mental functionality uh, that was provided by Dr. Kenneth Jansen from Boca Raton, Florida. And Kathy took some notes on, on his presentation and we want to share some of her reflections and perspectives from that presentation as it relates to her own experience in her office with, mm -hmm. with the people that come in. That's one of the things, most people don't come in because they can't think. Now I do have some people who, who that's their chief, chief complaint. Mm -hmm. They say, I can't think anymore. And, and that's somebody who has lost their hormones and usually they had, their hormones were very important to their brain and to their recall. Well, that's funny. My wife and I both get pellets. Mm -hmm. And we both recognize <laughs> that it's time for us to get pellets when we go brain dead. You know, we'll be in the middle of a conversation and we can't remember the name of a restaurant or the location. You know, I, I, I know how to drive there, but I can't tell you what street it's on. You know, th those remember simple the woman little who facts. who lives down the street, who has red hair, yeah. who, you know, that's kind of how yeah. people talk when their their recall when is searching. bad yeah. and the, I'm and stalling <laughs> I'm stalling <laughs> I'm stalling and, and I'm describing I can see the person yeah. but I can't recall the label or I can't recall the name of for me referral sur surgeons or physicians or mm -hmm. or people who you know somebody I know forever and I'm like really having trouble with their name now that occurs mm -hmm. for me if I wait too long for my pellets you well, would think that would never happen but I'm in the I'm in the middle of uh, pellet uh, density, but basically if I wait too long, I have yeah. trouble with recall. As, as do we. I mean, one of the benefits of a long-term relationship is that they know you so well that when you when, when you go through this process and you can't recall the facts mm -hmm. and you say, do you remember, oh, what's her name that lives down by the thingamajig? They know who <laughs> they, you're talking about. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I remember her. But when th they say that in couples, yeah. that each one of you has a job to do with recall and and names and places and so my job is to remember this my husband's job is to remember people's names yeah because in oh, medicine so you so you have to not remember somebody's name because you can't refer to a patient by their name right. when you're discussing what's wrong with them so in the very early stages they kind of wipe that out of your ability so John has that ability, and I have to have the ability to 
problem solve. That's yeah. basically my ability right. and to remember certain things. But in couples, that helps. But when one person's gone, it's like, you know, your half a brain is gone. Yeah, but <laughs> you just have different data files. I mean, you may not have the files for name recall, but if I push the right clinical button, you do a data dump of clinical terminology <laughs> that I sit here and just go like, <laughs> I'm just glazed over because I don't understand it. Yeah, it's a different, it's a different yeah, it's type a, of what you right. remember. But what we're discussing today is as you get older, as a couple or, or singularly, you lose brain power. You lose the ability to organize. You lose the ability to recall. You lose the ability to problem solve. And all of that's in the hippocampus. Mm -hmm. And the hippocampus is at the top of the brain stem, at the bottom of the brain, in the limbic system, which has to do with our emotions. But it is where all of our memories are stored. And it shrinks, let's see, 5%? 5% 5 a year. A year. After age, what, 50? <clears throat> age 50, which is really what they're saying is after your testosterone starts dropping, it, it starts shrinking. Mm -hmm. And testosterone and estrogen are necessary for memory. So we're talking about memory loss, hormone loss, and there's other reasons to have memory loss. You can have, uh, you can have uh, atherosclerosis and lose blood flow to your brain, yeah. and therefore some parts right. of your brain aren't working as well. They damage those file drawers. Right, so right. those file drawers are gone, or you have to relearn them. But as we age, our, our brain cells, our neurons, are actually, they should be repairing themselves like they did before we age. But now they are dying, and then they're not necessarily repaired immediately, or they're repaired later, or they're never repaired, because testosterone is anabolic. It helps grow the brain. Well, and, and this is part of what Dr. Jansen was talking about. He said that the historical assumptions about the mental declines or cognitive declines in aging is that they are irreversible and inevitable and that as you get old that's just one of the things that happens mm -hmm. and he is saying you know wait a minute let's take a look at some new information and some new things that we know mm -hmm. uh, first of all let's look to see if there are trigger events or subcategories in the aging process where interventions can be made. Mm -hmm. uh, are, are there things that we can identify that impact memory and cognitive functioning? Mm -hmm. And can we modify those things earlier and avoid the decline? Right. Or can we, when we've identified the decline, do something to reverse the decline? So he is challenging the historic assumptions about aging. Mm -hmm. And he goes through a whole list of historic assumptions, but the two that we want to talk about today uh, are the irreversible cognitive decline and the hormonal decline. Mm -hmm. So he identifies uh, a number of risk factors for cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. If you have these conditions in your life, you are more likely to experience cognitive decline as you get older. Your brain will be less quick, less facile, less capable of uh, fact recognition. I don't know if when you were in school if you, if you remember this or knew this at the time, but like tests are constructed uh, by teachers in, in one of two basic mm -hmm. methodologies. Uh, one is recognition memory. You know, they, mm -hmm. they put a multiple choice question there, the right answer is there, you gotta recognize mm -hmm. it. And one is recall, mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And you may discover that you've gotten to the place where you need the, the recognition pattern. You right. need the alternatives, you can pull it from a list. Mm -hmm. Aha, it's that one. Mm -hmm. But if you're just looking at a blank, it doesn't come. It Which is why, waits. as we get older, I mean, we had, and until I retired from yeah. OBGYN, I had to take yearly tests, right. and lots of it was fill in the blank. Oh. And that, that I'm worse at that than I used to be, yes. even though, even though I have testosterone, even though my my brain is no longer shrinking at the same rate, mm -hmm. I'm still just a little bit worse at those test taking um, talents. And part of it is you know more. You can't make the decision. Yeah. If you know more, then each each uh, question uh, looks like the right question, or, the, or they all look wrong. But having said that, there's still a little cognitive decline, but it's nothing like what it would be if I didn't replace hormones and I didn't exercise. So a lot of these things that are risk factors are, I know you're just wait, waiting with bated breath. Right. There are, uh, if you're obese, if you're diabetic, if you have sleep apnea and it's not treated, hypertension, depression, um, chronic stress, mm -hmm. which means like chronic, that means chronic production of cortisol. You can almost say chronic production of too much cortisol 
instead of chronic stress because that's what we're really talking about. Okay. And um, drugs, alcohol, and sedentary life like this. We're sitting mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. We're sitting here writing these. We're sitting here talking about them. We're sitting. So exercise um, is, very, is key. I've always known that. Everyone knows that you should exercise all the time. Mm -hmm. But it gives you more oxygen to your brain, of course, than you're going to be able to repair easier. Right. Even if you have testosterone, if you don't move around the, and you don't exercise, then the oxygen isn't getting there at such a uh, abundant rate. Well, so you need that as well. I, I know a number of older people who, who express themselves with the euphemisms, I'd rather uh, wear out than rust out. Right. Uh, use it or lose it. Uh -huh. uh, and what they're saying is if you become sedentary, if you lock yourself in your house and sit on the couch in front of the TV and don't go out and... You'll be obese. You, you'll be <laughs> obese and your brain will quit working, you know, and, and mm -hmm. you'll age more quickly and become less and less functional. That's not what any of us wants, I don't think. <laughs> At least that's yeah. not what I want for my patients. And that's certainly not what I want for my family or myself. So we're talking about what can you do you can do many of these things you right. can exercise every day you can, and nutrition was one of of his high points as well yeah. getting getting the proper nutrition fresh fruits and vegetables everything has to be fresh with no additives getting rid of most alcohol and all cigarettes and so, and getting rid of bad habits and and being being a healthier person overall and then replacing your hormones testosterone and estrogen now I just there's a point that he didn't make but there's a window of time right. where you can replace your hormones and you'll get your brain back mm. as it was and that's 10 years 10 years after you lose your testosterone both men and women and men lose it later if you replace it during that time your memory should stay the same unless you've had a stroke or something right. that or, or a trauma but if you wait till after that you can still gain some of your brain function back. It'll still be better than it was, but it won't go back to 40 years old. Yeah. So that's very important is the time frame when we replace. So sooner is better. Sooner is better. And, and so should you wander into your doctor's <laughs> offices and say, doctor, I'm in search of improved neuroplasticity. <laughs> yeah, that's a doctor term. That's yeah, a doctor that term. Means, plastic means kind of changing form and b able Flexible, to do anything. Flexible, adaptable, changeable. Uh, th that's the reference for, for what it means in neuroplasticity. And, and what Dr. Jansen <laughs> says is that if you live a healthy, active lifestyle, you actually create new brain cells in your hippocampus. So yeah. when you're over 50 and you start having that you know, 0.5 reduction every year, if you become obese, if you become sedentary, if you have sleep apnea that's not treated, if you're depressed and sit in the corner and suck your thumb, it gets worse. <laughs> but if you get up and be active and involved and take courses, work crossword puzzles, do clean up math your problems, act. <laughs> clean up, clean, clean up, up all the bad habits act, that you have, yeah, the food you eat, the things you ingest, uh, you can do something. You can personally have an impact without a doctor, without a doctor, <laughs> without drugs, in improving the quality of your mental process. Like anything else, <laughs> all the good stuff takes effort yeah. and it takes time and it takes organization. So. Uh, or it's or it takes money, so um, so all of those things you can have people help you exercise, but you still need to exercise all by on your own. Well, look at the list of, of recommendations that Dr. Jansen makes for maintaining neuroplasticity. He says get vigorous exercise. Mm -hmm. That's something you do all by yourself. Mindful meditation. Think about how you think, how you function, who you want to be in life, what you are contributing to the world. Uh, spend some time meditating. Meditation has amazing healing powers, but again, that's something that you do unilaterally. Mm -hmm. Mental gymnastics. Uh, as you drive down the highway, do do recall problems. You know, I remember having to memorize things in in high school. The school that I went to did a lot of memory and recitation, and I remember that uh, at West Point for years they had a rule: every cadet recites every day in every class from memory. I didn't know that. And so schools have moved away from memory work. It takes too much time. If you've got 40 kids in a class as a teacher and you ask each of them to memorize a paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, you know, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to divorce themselves <laughs> from the political body. You know, 
you can do that. My school didn't uh, make me do that, and I didn't did. learn to do it. And, and so he says, those kind of mental gymnastics, do math problems. I remember when my son was five, six years old, we'd be driving in the car, and we'd give him math problems. Solve this. <laughs> And today he's in college studying. Your poor math. son. No, I, I would have been befuddled. I'd be like, "Where is my calculator or my slide rule no. before that?" No, it'd be like, you know, what's two times a nine minus five plus twelve? I still can't and do that. And he would do it. And today he is in college studying math. That's an yeah. auditory skill. Yeah. And Some visual, people. I mean, he sees math the way you see right, words or, right. or you know health diagrams. Yeah. Or so that that also tests something else, and yeah. I also. Uh, exercises another part of your brain yeah. which is your auditory learning which some people are more auditory some more visual so I'd have to write it down and then I get the answer because I'm it. visual but there so are studies that show not everybody you, you, can do the math problems if you write it or auditory. underline it then yeah. it helps lock it in your long-term memory as opposed to your short-term memory so that's, that's right. a, a skill technique mm -hmm. so the other thing that Dr. Jansen says is uh, learn new skills sign up take a dance class Go, go do square dancing or go do uh, formal, uh, uh, I'm blanking on the word, social <laughs> dancing. Social dancing, uh, ballroom dancing. Ballroom, that's the word I'm looking for, ballroom <laughs> dancing. Uh, or take a Spanish class or... or uh, learn something new every class. year. Yes. I mean, you can learn a new exercise routine, well, like and, hot and yoga, or you can learn, it doesn't have to just be And universities mental. offer programs for uh, lifelong learners. Uh, Washington University here in St. Louis has a lifelong learning program for older adults. And you can take courses on the Roaring Twenties, or the <laughs> development of the Nazi Party, or, you know. Uh, right, yeah, I mean. It's just awesome, you should go do that. You should, and uh, that I always, ha I have a rule that I have to learn something new every year. So when yeah. January rolls around, I have to decide what I'm going to do that's new this year was our book of yeah. course because that just took lots lots of effort yeah. but every year I have to do something new because when you do something new your brain stays plastic it keeps moving so, so there are two more uh, the le the next one is healthy nutrition mm -hmm. uh, which you may need some help with in terms of getting advice or information but again mm -hmm. it's a thing you are required to do for yourself so all of these things are things that you do Mm -hmm. Then the last one is something that you need a physician for, which is replace hormones of testosterone and estradiol. Mm -hmm. So in terms of neuroplasticity and improving your capacity for that, most of these things are things that you can do or have an impact on by yourself mm -hmm. should you choose to do so. But you will need the hormone replacement, and for that you need a physician. That's right. I have the hardest time trying to convince my patients that if they come in for hormones, then it's not going, I mean, it's not going to cure everything if they don't take part. If they mm -hmm. don't participate in this project of making, getting them healthier, I'm going to give them the tools, but then they have, they are in charge of their food and their exercise and their mental upkeep. And they're in charge of their meditation and how they, feel, how they start to feel about the, the world around them calming them down, getting rid of the anger, getting rid of uh, a lot of the frustration that everybody has that mm -hmm. uses up our strength and uses up our brain cells. So it's a, it is a combination. It, you can't just go, oh, doc, here, but dump all your problems. Now, I want to hear the problems, but then I'll do my part and you'll do your part and hand in hand, we'll walk down and, and but, make you healthier even as you age. Uh, again, Kathy, what you do that so many doctors don't do and so many patients no longer expect is you sit down with the patient and you see them as a whole person. Mm -hmm. And you have a conversation with them as a person about solving the problems in their life. You know, what is solvable, what is manageable, what is not, what do you have to learn to work around, mm -hmm. where can we make an intervention. You don't just see them as a data bank of computerized information, mm -hmm. you know, we need to add this and subtract that and move that. I mean, and so you it's talk old to fashioned them medicine. <laughs> about their responsibility and their power to engage in their own healing. And sometimes uh, that's all it takes. You know, people, people are desperate to have somebody listen to them, especially mm -hmm. when they're in pain, when they're depressed, when they're lonely. Uh, if, if you can listen to them and then offer them hope, mm -hmm. even if that hope requires some functional behavior on their part. And, and mm -hmm. for things that are more serious or more elaborate, what you do is make good referrals. You know, mm -hmm. you need to go see a therapist, or you need to go see a specialist, or you need to go do something else. But you still talk to them about mm -hmm. and listen to them talk about, this is a gap in my life. I am afraid or concerned or frustrated because these things aren't working. And, you know, everybody wants the magic pill. 
and because yeah, that's just, so easy just give me the the placebo or the panacea and, I, and I'll be fine and what you tell them is there is no magic pill I can do some things for you and with you that will give you the raw material we'll put the hormones back in your body but you still have to do something with your body I kind of view it as I view stuff and I, I view situations like this as a picture mm -hmm. <clears throat> and my my picture on this is that when my patients come in and they've had everyone say that they're okay but they're not and they know they're not and their hormones are are off and they yeah. can't think anymore and they think they're getting Alzheimer's. Yes. Some of them oh, have been so tested, scary. some of them have tested negative and then they go, you're negative, see ya, bye. But that's because doctors test for disease. But I view it as a picture of, uh, and how I felt. I was at the bottom of a well mm -hmm. and all I can do is drop the rope, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. you gotta climb up. Yeah. So. Hormones are the rope so that you can think enough and have enough motivation and have enough uh, self-health or energy to get going yeah. so that you can get up that ladder so that you don't lose your brain. I mean, I can't quite think of anything worse. Right. I mean, I know losing your body is bad, and losing, but you're losing your brain is worse because we need it for every single thing we do. Some people can survive without their body, but mm -hmm. not their brain. So in, in this way, we want to give you hope that no, you're not crazy, and no, you, you would, if you're under 60, you probably don't have Alzheimer's. But one way to tell is to give your, replace your thyroid, or excuse me, your testosterone and your estrogen, and then see how you can think. Because usually that's an easier fix than uh, going through the testing for Alzheimer's. Sometimes well, I refer people for Alzheimer's that. Alzheimer's is so scary. It, it steals your life but leaves your body. Right. And, and if you've had any experience with people that are suffering from Alzheimer's, it's just so damnably sad to to watch them retreat into the fog and mm -hmm. not be able to reach them or get them back mm -hmm. uh, and what dr. Jensen says is that the the extrapolated numbers for the increase in Alzheimer's are pretty horrific of you what they are expecting over the next 20 or 30 years for the for just an explosion in Alzheimer's sufferers and he and other doctors like you are suggesting to people if you make these interventions in replacing your hormones soon enough, mm -hmm. you can either avoid that mm -hmm. impact or delay it by as much as 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so if that's a concern, and for any of you who ever had any exposure to it, it will be a concern, then one of the alternative things to think about and invest yourself in, in getting information or pursuing a, a line of treatment mm -hmm. is hormone replacement therapy. Now we're going to talk about other things that Dr. Jansen uh, was uh, expressing uh, in terms of cognitive decline in, in the next podcast that we do. Mm -hmm. But today we wanted to concentrate on just sort of drawing the picture of why it's a concern and, and giving the message that there is information and there is hope out there. There is hope. It's there. big. That's a, that's, a big that, that's a big concept to give somebody who feels like they've, they've lost the game and they, they have to just check out. They can't do their job. Some of my patients have lost jobs because they couldn't think. Oh, yeah. When they got testosterone and their estradiol back, or, they, or for men, just testosterone, they're back in the game. They have their mojo back and they can get a, a, a better job or the same job as, as they had before because they can think it through. So this is really important to everything, your, your ability to provide a living for yourself. So in many cases, not everybody loses um, mental strength as they get older, but mm -hmm. most people do eventually, some earlier, some later. But this will delay it. And, the, and testosterone replacement and all of these different lifestyle changes can delay your losing your memory and, and your mind. And we want, we want you to grasp a hold of that and do what you can do at home, but also seek out help and, and get your testosterone and estradiol replaced if you're a woman and testosterone if you're male. Mm -hmm. So come back next time and we'll talk about why Dr. Jensen thinks that modern medicine needs to focus on early uh, diagnosis and prevention mm -hmm. as opposed to treatment after the fact. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. 
Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.